I'm Christian Heal. I'm a senior research fellow here at the Neil A. Maxwell Institute for Religious Scholarship. So what is a disciple scholar? The, this comparing of disciple and scholar is sort of a lovely formulation um, that comes from, from Elder Maxwell. And one of the things I think he's doing there is reminding us that everything that we do, we're actually a, a disciple. So I think it's the same thing to be a disciple lawyer, a disciple mum, a disciple um, business person. So it, it means that in our occupation, in the thing that we feel called in our life to do, that thing is infused with discipleship, discipleship of Jesus Christ, so that we're trying to follow Jesus in our daily life, in our work, in our activity, and that whatever we're doing, somehow we're reflecting that desire to follow Jesus. It's essential for me, really, especially working at Brigham Young University, working here at the Maxwell Institute, for my work to reflect my values, for me to be able to be who I am as a believer, as, a, as an aspiring follower of Christ, as a scholar. And that affects how I relate to my colleagues, it reflects how I work with students, it reflects the kind of time that I give to nurturing and helping and, and being with others. And hopefully it reflects the way that I relate to other people in my daily life. One of the things I love from the Book of Mormon is the description of a disciple as a peaceable follower of Christ. And that you can tell a disciple by their peaceable walk with others. And so being non-contentious, being non-combative, trying to be peaceable in the way that I treat others, respectful, and that's a, a large part of kind of how being a disciple reflects my scholarship and infuses my scholarship. Well, I think it's, first of all, it's important for me because of this is something which I feel called to do. I feel called to both be a scholar and that call came through my devotion to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, came through my dis dis discipleship within this church. But I think it's important in a kind of a larger sense it's important for the mission of Brigham Young University, for what we're trying to achieve at the university. But I think it's an important sort of value more broadly that I think that when you see people who's, who are believers, who are, who are what perhaps people would call scholar practitioners, who are true scholars, but also are, are believing in Christ or believing in another religious tradition, they, there's something different about them and the way that they work and the, the way that they relate to each other and they stand out and the world is better for them being in it. And I think that's why it's important to be a, a disciple scholar. So how can studying ancient Christians help me and help others become a disciple scholar is a, I think a really valuable uh, question and a sort of a difficult question, one that I've been kind of wrestling with my whole um, academic life, I, I suppose. I really felt called to study this group of, of Christians, to this a group which is often left out from the story of Christianity. These are Christians who lived in the, in the ancient Middle East and are still there in the Middle East today. Um, they, they spoke in a different language, in Aramaic, the same language family that, that uh, the Aramaic that Jesus spoke. And there are, there are a a fascinating and faithful group of Christians, in part because they're Christians without a kind of a country. Um, they they spread over Iraq, over Syria, over Turkey. They've constantly had to deal with conflict, and they've had to be peacemakers, and they've had to be figures who have stand in the, the the borders of cultures. They've they've often been translators, for example, translating works from Greek into Syriac, from Syriac into Arabic. They they've sit on the borders of the ancient Persian and Roman empires. And so they've had to learn to be peaceable. They've had to learn to, to interpret the world for, the, for others. And I think that, that part of the Eastern Christians that I study is a kind of a model for me for how to live my life. 
my life has prepared me to be a disciple scholar in kind of in interesting ways, in perhaps um, uh, unusual ways. In part because my there was no expectation that I would become a scholar. There is no uh, academic sort of tradition in our family. My brothers and I are the first generation to go to university. Um, we're a pr practical family. We, you know, and what I saw particularly with my father was a practical Christianity, a Christianity that was not um, about uh, saying things well and understanding the understanding th the theology and the theological impact of things, but a Christianity of doing good in the world. And even though my life has led me to want to understand the kind of writings of ancient Christians, want to, to really engage in, in sort of deep thought, I'm still infused with this sense that, that being a disciple is actually an active thing. I feel as though I'm being a disciple when I'm writing for the saints, but mostly there's this sense that being a disciple is how we relate to others how we see a need and give freely of ourselves. And, and that's a way that I suppose my upbringing has prepared me to be a disciple scholar. I think when I entered university, when I started my university studies, I fell in love with the universities and with this place where I could pursue truth and pursue understanding and, and pursue insight. And I went into Jewish studies, that was the first degree that I did. Um, and I did this as a believing letter to saying, I'm, I'm interested in it, and I feel as though my, my faith sort of fueled this. And so I fell in love with these two things simultaneously, the gospel, which, which had been a part of my life growing up and would really became something um, even more rich as a missionary, and then universities, and they felt to some extent like two different things, this love of knowledge and this love of the gospel. I think coming to BYU allowed me to merge these two things into one kind of united whole. And that's the, the, the way of becoming a disciple scholar for me, where I've been able to sort of see these worlds merge and come together through the example of others, through the work that I do here, and through the constant reminder that these are the values that we have at BYU. So my daily routine as a scholar is quite boring, <laughs> really. My children are constantly wondering what I do, and the best description they've come up with is, I'm a lame Indiana Jones. I am like Indiana Jones, but I don't really go anywhere, and I don't have any adventures. And so there is a certain sort of bookishness, and if we're not careful, uh, scholars can become um, kind of insular and so there's a need to sort of step out of oneself so my life here will be uh, will be reading and working on particular articles or working on a particular book but I also try and work regularly with students and so that's bringing me out of myself we'll have regular weekly seminars and so there'll be papers to read and chances to engage with other scholars and the care with which one is able to do that the the time that we give of ourselves when perhaps the selfish part of us wants to be focused on our own work that's part of the way that we show ourselves as a as a disciple because we we're, we're showing care and attention and relationships with others and it pulls us out of this sort of insular world perhaps of a scholar The balance of discipleship and scholarship can be difficult. And certainly there are times, I, I love the example of Clayton Christensen when he was a, um, a Rhodes Scholar at Oxford, and he would talk about these long days that he would have doing intensive study, and at the end of it, between 11 and 12 at night, he would read his Book of Mormon. And that this kept him sort of connected to his religion. So there are times in one's studies where you just have to sort of almost hang on by your fingernails, where you have to just make sure that your your religion is there in your life. Because in order to become a scholar, you have to do these this intensive years of intensive study. And so you have to make sure that that, that discipleship, that connection with uh, with God, that connection with one's religion is stays and is a is a fixed part and a, and a necessary part of one's life and i think that balance of 
um, discipleship and scholarship. It's the same for, for any career path. You have to do what it takes to become good, to become employable in your career. And that takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. And so making sure that one finds time and makes time to introduce those elements of, of religion, of discipleship into one's life, I think is essential. Uh, when I think of disciple scholarship, I actually think of my colleagues here at, B at uh, the Maxwell Institute and others at, uh, at BYU who are just such uh, generous and warm-hearted human beings, but also brilliant people whose minds are alive, who have done dil who have worked diligently in their training and achieving their expertise. Um, I also think of a, I have a lovely colleague in my field who teaches at Vanderbilt University. His name is David Michelson. And watching him, he's a Christian, a firm, firm believer, and watching him interact with others, interact with his students, that sort of peaceable walk that he has, that gentleness, that care and consideration, that self-effacement, the desire to constantly be lifting others and seeing others, that's, a, that's been a real model for me as well. I think he's a lovely example of what being a disciple scholar looks like. The fact that Elder Maxwell gave this commission to disciple scholarship and articulated it and to work here at the Maxwell Institute suddenly supercharges this commission. All of a sudden, I'm not just thinking about this as an abstract thing, but I'm working in that the Institute that seeks to honor his name. And therefore my life needs to somehow contribute to that. I'm constantly engaged as I walk through the door and see the, hit the name of the Institute above the door every day. I think of that commission. I see his, his paint, the painting of him in, in our hallway and, and think of that commission. And so it, affects, it does affect the way that I think about my life, think about my work, and think about my relationship to scholarship. I think disciple scholarship is needed in today's world to add a sense of uh, an investment in community, an investment in people, and an investment in connection, and an investment in sort of loving kindness in a world that's fracturing and pulling apart. And that's happening even in the academy and even th through those means. We can spend our life arguing and contending at an interpersonal level through our work or we can spend time working mutually and together to try and achieve something. And I, I think that's why it's so important in the contemporary world. I think the, the heart of my testimony is a conviction that God loves his children. This is something which came as a, as a revelation to me as a young missionary, tracting and working in the in the kind of rural streets of Cornwall, that God loves all of his children, regardless of whether they accept the particular message that I had for them or not. And that made me approach the world differently. It made me see others differently, that I'm not trying to create an insular community of, of the righteous, but I'm here in the world and among the world trying to set an example of what it looks like to be a disciple scholar to and to learn from others to learn from learn truth wherever i find it and embrace the insights of others and that's the invitation that i would give to both students and those who are who are desiring to sort of learn what it means to be a disciple scholar is to be willing to embrace truth wherever you find it, to take, to have the confidence in our own testimony, our, in our own faith, and to love others as God loves them, to see others as God sees them, and to feel that sense of wonder that there is in the world and, and the wonderful things that there are to learn.